I get those goosebumps every time You come around, yeah You ease my mind, you make everything so fine Worry about those times I'm way too numb, yeah It's way too dumb, yeah I get those goosebumps every time I need the hype Throw that to the side, yeah I get those goosebumps every time, yeah When you're not around me Throw that to the side, yeah I get those goosebumps every time, yeah 713 yeah. Could've yeah. quit yeah. it, yeah, I'm riding Why they on me? Why they on me? I'm flying I'm sipping low key I'm sipping low key and high I get those goosebumps every time. I need the hype. Throw that. Hello, no goosebumps here. How is everyone on this fine evening? Uh, right, hello everybody, welcome to Loaded Mag in UFC. Now, I, I, I did make an attempt at uh, changing the tune for, for our intro, but when I ran it through YouTube, the copyright kings killed me. It was going to be uh, one of those days, from if, you, if, if anyone knows it, from uh, the new FC24, but it's been one of those seasons. So, uh, yeah, nothing nothing went right for me today and, and a, lot, a lot of fronts. But, uh, Pete, how are you? Oh, flipping out. Yeah, well, I'm, 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 as I've spoke to you boys, I've not been well over the weekend. Um, still not feeling 100% now, but yeah. I don't know what talk about last night's game is going to do to me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could be back in bed by 10 o'clock. But uh, yeah, yeah um, other than feeling a bit under the weather, um Everyone else is healthy and happy, so I can't complain. Good, good. Christopher, how are you? How, the king of Cheltenham. Yeah, mate, uh, do you know what? Cheltenham's been good today. I've had, I've had a bit of a hectic morning, but um, I've, had, I've had a nice afternoon. Um, but I hope I hope I haven't caught anything off Pete, because uh, <laughs> the last couple of hours I felt a bit ropey, but I don't know whether it was all the excitement of Cheltenham. So maybe, maybe, maybe I'll feel better uh, later on. But yeah, very... Um, despondent after yesterday's game not gonna lie um really 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 disappointed uh i know we're gonna get into it but um yeah just just you know same same shit different day unfortunately uh, but how are you Daz? anyway you all right mate i'm grand yeah yeah apart from the game yesterday yeah, well, there my wife has been sick the last few days as well with um Ken no one being sick on uh, Mother's Day of all days. Wow. But uh yeah, but uh no, no, we're where the rest of us are okay. She's up, she's on the men now as well. But yeah, apart from that, but well, you know, a better game to talk about would be our game on the 29th of March. Uh the charity game for the Alan Shearer Foundation, where Loaded Mag, yes, I put Loaded Mag first, Sam Mulliner, uh versus uh Newcastle fans TV. So looking forward to, to that when we get over for but we're there for the next league game, uh, so uh, ho hopefully we'll have hopefully we'll have something to double celebrations that that weekend, lads. Uh, that, that's what we're hoping for. But uh, yeah, the link is in the chat if anyone does want to to, to run, yeah. donate, and it's also oh it's on screen as well, and yeah. it's also in the description. Uh, but let's get into this game. Um, right, let's start it off. Uh, here is the team. Uh, Barnes out with the injury. Uh, Miggy was selected over Murphy. Uh, Longstaff selected over Miley. Um, Newcastle haven't beaten Chelsea in the league since May 2012. And, spoiler alert, still haven't be beaten them. But, lads, what do you think of the team that lined up? Pete? Oh, yeah. You look at the team, you see Tino's starting... And you see Willock's in the team, Isaac. You're looking at that team and you, you're thinking it's kind of what you're expected. The only real change was is, is that Murphy came out for, for Miggy. I wasn't against it. I wasn't against it. Um, you know, Miggy's work rate right up and down um, stopped Chelsea. Um, it, it kind of made sense. 
Um, he's probably been a bit more of a workhorse, but everything else was was kind of as I expected. The, the one that you alluded to was the big Mrs. Barnes because having him come off the bench was something that we, we've become accustomed to in the last couple of weeks. So it would have been nice to have that option. Um, but it is as, as, as we kind of expected, really. Um, I'm not going to lie. Brilliant. Chris, your thoughts on the, the lineup? Um, yeah, pretty much exactly the same as Pete. Uh, for me, um, but hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? I, I still think it was a mistake to drop uh, Murphy and put McGee in. Um, but as I say, if, if McGee had scored and we'd won, I'm sure I would have felt differently. But yeah, I mean, that was that was the only thing for me. I personally would have started Murphy because I thought, thought he had a good game last game. Um, but again, as Peaks kind of alluded to, you know, I, I, I can kind of see why Eddie Howe's chosen uh, Miggy. And let's not forget, Murphy hasn't been back all that long, so maybe he's just trying to protect him a little bit. So it it, it made sense. But yeah, everybody else, it was as expected. Yeah, I'm with you guys as well. I would have gone up for Murphy or for Miggy. That was my thoughts as well uh, when I saw the, the team news. Um <laughs> Here's the Chelsea team as well, but we saw enough of them yesterday. Right, uh, let's get into it. Uh, first five minutes, positive for, for me. The first five, the best bit of, get bit of the game for me was the first <laughs> five minutes because we, we were positive. I thought oh, we're up for this, uh, and, and I just thought to my head, "Gone, Pete can always tell in the first couple of minutes whether whether we're going to get something." I think oh, I think we're going to get something here. No, but then on the fifth minute, uh, <laughs> Chelsea goal. Uh, Cole Palmer with a shot uh, from distance after a, a bottom of clearance and, uh, for, found its way to him and um, Jackson with the deflection uh, or a little little kind of nice touch from him uh, put it in the back of the net around um, Dubs who was nowhere near it. So thoughts on, on that first goal uh, for Chelsea? Fuck's sake. Oh. <laughs> yes, we have to do this. There's two it's more in people. our contracts. <laughs> Lad, on a, oh, it was an absolute joke. Joke of a goal. Um, Chelsea hadn't really. Even, it was their first attack. Yeah. It was their first attack. They haven't put. They haven't put. A, I know it was early on in the game, but they didn't even look like they were going to create anything. And it, it's a shocking clearance from. Um, from Botman. When I first watched it, I just I thought the ball's been whipped in at him with pace. He's just tried to almost kind of guide the ball back out and just make sure he's got rid of it. But it's just not far enough. It's it's not it's not good enough clearance. And it's on his favoured foot as well. You just expect better. But then even then it drops to the edge of the area. Palm uh, Palmer. Um he, you know, he, he takes a shot. The shots the shot's going wide. It, it, it's it's not. It's it is it, looking at the angle behind the goal. It looks like it's going wide, um, and it's just an, a, a deflection that takes it back in from Jackson. But the goalkeeping, how are you getting beat from there? I, like people, I think uh, people in the sky in the Sky Studio, right? Uh, Ian Wright and um, and Carragher were saying about. You know, he might have been unsighted. I'm sorry, like he's flat footed, and this is not going to be the last time we talk about Debravka being flat footed. It's 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 just a comedy of errors that just gifts Chelsea the lead. And you know what, boys? I don't know if you spotted this yourself. They almost the fans, the players, they almost looked shocked that they'd scored. They couldn't believe the fact that they'd scored a goal and that early on in the game. It was like we just gifted them the goal. I couldn't believe it. Like the shock on Cole Palmer's face, like the fans, it was almost like a delayed celebration from the from the Chelsea fans because they didn't even expect it. That's how bad that goal was. Jesus Christ, man. Like, oh, uh, I'll get into it in a bit, but it's just, it was an absolute nightmare start. After that positivity that you talked about, Daz, we pressed up well. We caused them a few problems. We having, they were having to kick it out for goal kicks um, into into the touch um, because we were pressing them high. And then we go and do that and just think, flipping out. It's going to be one of those days. But yeah, poor, poor goal. One of those days. Yep, the team. Uh, Chris, your thoughts on Chelsea's first goal? Do you know what? I, I Not that I'm disagreeing with Pete, but I, it was funny because it was so early on and because of how it happened, 
I wasn't too down about it because it's one of those goals where, I mean, let, let's be clear, and Pete's already described it, the clearance from Botman is poor. It's really, really poor. But it's one of those, it's one of those goals where, you know, the player just puts a little bit of pace on it, shoots at will. You know, he, he didn't think he was going to score. And then Nicholas Jackson sees it coming towards him and he just does like a little flick. Um, that saying, Pete's absolutely right, you know, when he says about Martin Zabrowska just being flat-footed. Like, you know, I'm, again, we will get into it later. But I, I think uh, quite a lot of the if you if you if you looked at all the goalies in the Premier League, quite a lot of them would have saved that. It there wasn't it, when Nicholas Jackson flicked it, it took the pace out of it. Um, mm. and he should be on his feet, <clears> ready, you know, like on his toes, ready to move. Um, so I, I, I have little sympathy with Martin Debravka on that one. However, as I say, you do see goals like that, and I, I was a bit, I think, because it was so early on, and because, like you said, Daz, we made a positive start, I didn't give it much thought. As in, it happens, and I was like, okay, we've got a mountain to climb now. But I still didn't feel like, I didn't, I, I wasn't worried at that point, put it that way. Because I thought, you know what, those those kind of goals happen. And I even said to my mates in the chat, I went, just wait. And I, I'll have to send it to you boys. I went, just wait. Alexander Isaac's going to get a chance. And when he pops, it'll be 1-1. Um, and, you know. I'm more disappointed about what happened afterwards, if I'm honest. That goal, I've seen them before and we'll see them again. I think Chelsea just took a pot shot. Nicholas Jackson, who, whose touch, by the way, is absolutely dreadful. And it just so happens that his touch wasn't bad for that. Um, you know, we had his back to goal. I don't even think he was entirely sure where the ball was going. So it, I, I kind of take it as a bit of a fluky one. I didn't, you know, I didn't. Um, it's just one of those shitty goals that sometimes you concede. Um, but yeah, Bottom's clearance isn't good enough and Dubravka needs to react quicker. Hey, I uh, was setting up for another show that we'll, we'll probably do in the next couple of weeks or week. Uh, Dubravka is 35. I didn't realise that. Not a great age, Eddie, before you even think about saying it. Not a great age in football in no. terms. No. But yeah, uh, let's move on. Newcastle didn't were days where the goal I find it difficult to get into the game. Uh, I wrote down here, long staff, sloppy at best. Uh, Miggy and Gordon switch it up to try and provide uh, some cover for Byrne. Miggy kind of more track him back. Gordon had already uh, taken the, the knock to the knee. Uh, uh, and uh, at this stage, then on 34 minutes, uh, Gordon was off and uh, Murphy was on. Um, probably linking back uh, and building on, on the earlier instant. We will be talking about Gordon towards the, the, the end of the show as well, uh, or after we go through this analysis. We'll get, we'll get through these goals first. Um, some crosses into into dangerous positions for Newcastle, but no joy. Uh, that's when uh, when Murphy was beating the man. Um, then um, 42 minutes, uh, Isaac goal, great ball from Bruno, uh, and, and Isaac, Miss Rice. Uh, passed it into the bottom corner. Uh, one one. There was a bit of hope. There was a lot of language in in our own chat messages. Uh, by Mister Davy. Uh, but uh, on that one, because we thought then this is on here. We're going to go live right after the match. Uh, but that 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 abandoned, uh, after that. But thoughts on Isaac's goal. Come on, Pete. Oh. You know the one shining light. Uh. In our performance, uh, Alexander Isaac, Jesus Christ, give him what he wants in the summer. Give him what he wants. Keep him. Do whatever you can to keep him at the club because he's the one guy that can produce a moment like that out of nothing. It was an absolute superb finish, um, and we've come to we've come to uh, be used to seeing that type of quality from Alexander Isaac. I have to say, it's a great find from Bruno. Um, it was a bit of a ping ball situation in there with Chelsea and Newcastle. We're just giving each other the ball back. You have the ball. No, you have the ball. It was one of them. Bruno gets hold of the ball, dinks it forward to Isaac. And it's just the way that he takes it so early that beats the goalkeeper. He just shifts the ball and just within the shift, he hits it. Um, and uh, Disassi can't can't set himself. The goalkeeper can't set himself. And it's right into that far corner. Thierry Henry-esque. He used to do it all the time playing for Arsenal. He, it's just a, it's a superb finish. It really, really is. And um, yeah, uh, it, I have to say at that point, um, 
yeah, there was some uh, not particular uh, pleasant language being said in our chat. Celebrate. So, yeah, the, the, that beat did. <laughs> the world has. Uh, thank you for reminding me. And uh, I, yeah, I thought we're in. We're in here. We're, we're, we're back in the game. Um, and at that point, I did think that if, if anyone was going to score, it was going to be us. Um, but, yeah, a superb goal from you know, Alexander Izak, and he's just proven why he's the second best striker in the Premier League this season. Um, easily. The segue here before we go to Chris. I, uh, this is a football manager uh, segue. I remember you telling me, Pete, because you'd gone ahead to me in football manager, that Izak is always saying, I want a keeper, I want a keeper. So I brought him a keeper in my football manager. So I brought him Mamash Philly. So he, he, he won't have to say, to say that to me. So give money once. Did you not buy him uh, Hugo Lloris, no? No, definitely not. <laughs> I, am I okay with the fact that I bought both? <laughs> yes. Ah, yes. Okay. I, I, like that. That. I, I did get the a, a short stop um, from Hugo Lloris uh, just before he retired because I need the goalkeeper in there. Uh, when the January window opened, Mahmoud Ashfali came in and yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden his problems <laughs> went away. Uh, H- Hugo Lloris... <laughs> he's playing out in the snow now, I think, these days. So he, he, Isaac, Isaac's problems and Newcastle's problems went away because uh, we got rid of Hugo Lloris <laughs> and we got rid of him So, uh, uh, And I bet you any money, uh, he's saying the same to anyhow right now. Get me a goalkeeper. Yeah. Get me a goalkeeper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> Bring back Pope as well. Chris, your thoughts on Isaac's goal? Just sublime, mate. Just sublime. Um, I, th- I don't know if I told you boys, I think I have, but like I've, I've hurt my arm. So over the last like three, four weeks, I played squash like three or four weeks ago and um, I've strained my arm. Still still sore now. I mean, I can use it, but it's like, you know, like if I put any weight on it or whatever it hurts, mm-hmm. Isaac scores. I'm literally in the living room, goes towards the cabinet where the telly's on and I'm banging the cabinet because I'm just like, it, it, it was just, it was just the most beautiful goal. It was just unbelievable. And then my arm felt it afterwards. And, and I'm, I'm messaging, I'm messaging you. So I had it all in capsules. Did my messaging news, got these fucking brilliance and all that. And I messaged my mates and I was like, so I went one up from Pete. I went, currently, right now, best striker in the league. Best striker in the league right now. He, 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 he's, he's silly, silly good. And do you know what? My overriding feeling, and I don't know about you boys, my overriding feeling of full time was like, We've got to sort this out because we need to keep this guy because he didn't deserve to be on 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 the losing team last night because it, that that finish was just ah oh, all my mates coming back going oh Tony's better Watkins better I'm not getting into it but they knew they knew do you know what it was it, Pete you described it as um, Thierry on me esque and uh, it's the way it's the way he creates that little yard as you say. And he, he strokes it home. He doesn't even put that much power on it, but he's put enough on it so that the keeper can't get there. Like, he hasn't even put, like, full power on it, and it just goes in the bottom corner. And the, the defender, De Sassi's nowhere near it. And Petrovic, he can't react quick enough. <laughs> and so, unlike we blamed Abavka for not reacting quick enough, I can't blame Petrovic for that because uh, it, was just a, it was just a great finish. It really, really was. And at 1-1, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm I'm really yeah. I'm really up for it now when I'm thinking we're we're gonna win this now. Um that but that that's where I was. Sore arm, absolutely pumped. It, 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 he uses he uses the defender, the sassy, he just use it just to bend it round him. And that's what some of the best strikers do. They don't need to that's smash it. the ball. Not they just it. need to be able to just guide the ball round the player so it just blindsides the goalkeeper. That's exactly what it was. But I, I, you know what I love? I love the fact that Gary Neville and Carragher, they they try their hardest not to big up Alexander Isaac. They really oh. do. It's because he's at Newcastle United. If he was at Arsenal, if he was at Liverpool, oh. they, they would be oh. talking about him as one of the oh. top, top strikers in Europe. It's always yeah. the same. They, they they were so reluctant. Like Gary Neville's re- reaction to the ball going in is almost of shock. And if that would have been someone else, you would have got some weird noises coming out of his coming out of his mouth to celebrate the goal going in. If that was a Man United player, if that was, I mean, the amount of the times he's reacted to Rasmus Hoyland tapping the ball into the net like he's he scored a thirty yard screamer. 
But yeah, he's kind of almost shocked that Alexander Isak's doing it. And they hate the fact that we've got a top-level striker, a top, top striker, one of the best in Europe, playing for Newcastle United. They hate it. And this is why it's so important, and you boys have said it, we need to keep hold of him in the summer. We have to keep hold of him. You, you, um, lads, we, we cannot, you cannot replace Alexander Isak. Who, who are you replacing him with? If, if you're replacing him, you're, you're spending more than what we paid for Alexander Isak to get someone of his ability. Like, we, we, we talked about this the other day, Pete. You're absolutely right. And it, it's a genuine question, isn't it? I forget who said it. Somebody said it. And the question was, would you swap Alexander Isak for anyone at the moment in Europe? And I, I genuinely can't think of anyone to swap him for. Genuinely can't think of anyone. He's that good. I, I wouldn't. You wouldn't. You, you, <laughs> you kind of like you're looking at your your Ossimans and, and players like that as maybe as someone along the same lines as him. But you know, Ossiman's a, a, a top striker. He's going through a difficult moment at the moment. He's, he's a top striker, but <clears throat> they're talking about Ossiman is 120 million. This boy's doing what he's doing. This yeah. boy's doing what Ossiman's doing. We don't need Ossiman. We don't, we don't. We don't need him. We've got a player here, similar age, just as good in front of goal. Like what? Honestly, I, we ha he has to stay. He has to stay. He does. If but, anyone from PIF is watching, though, if you want to bring us Osman, we will make room in the squad for him as well as Isaac. <laughs> but uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, look, Chris, I was on the same page as you. Uh, I thought that w I thought we were winning this game, and we were I was get I got all my pictures ready for half time. Half them I could, so that's how uh, confident I was. But the first half wasn't over yet because Chelsea had the ball in the net, but it was it was offside. We looked in, had a chance just on the half time mark. Nope, there was Willock's chance first, and then there was a uh, Dubravka save it was from Sterling right on half time that which mm. took us to that then. Uh, then let's get into the second half. One Chelsea goal down, two to go. Uh, Maggie shot saved uh, right at the start of the second half. Uh, he had he had the power but, uh, in the shot, but went straight at the keeper. Uh, the first ten minutes, of the game was was very open. Uh, there was kind of space everywhere uh, for both sides. Uh, mm -hmm. Newcastle were then living dangerously. Uh, but then fifty seven minutes, uh, Cole Palmer. Goal uh, went through Bottom's legs, I think, uh, and, and he took the ball, the ball in tight space to make it uh, two one. But Chris, we go to you with thoughts on the second goal from um, Cole Power. Um, really frustrating. Lisa, Lisa was in the living room with me, and literally, she said about ten seconds. <clears throat> she said about ten seconds before the goal went in. Why? Why are you all at the back? Why are you all sitting at the back? And I was like, I said, don't worry. I said, we did this against Wolves. I said, we're just soaking the pressure up. And then I said, we're looking to hit on the counter. But if you're going to do that, you need to defend properly. Um, and we just we just didn't. Um, oh, it's just so it's just so annoying. I think, and I could be wrong here, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think um, the ball gets played into Cole Palmer. And I think... I think it's Dan Byrne who lets him go. I think Dan Byrne, he, he, Cole Palmer's originally on the right, Dan Byrne's on the left. Cole Palmer drifts in and Dan Byrne's left him. Uh, and then Cole Palmer, again, it, it reminds me a little bit of the first goal. You know, he shot from distance. Don't get me wrong, I'm not taking anything away from him because to be fair, he was it was a, a really decent effort on goal as it proved because it went in. Um, but... Again, maybe I'm sounding harsh, but I, I wanted Bruno to close him down a lot quicker. Um, Bruno's a good three or four yards away from him. Like it, it sums up the whole performance for me. It was just lethargic. It, we were too slow to react. Um, Cole Palmer hits it, and then you know Sven Botman. I don't know. It goes through Sven Botman's legs, and you could call it unlucky. But I'm fed up now of the ball constantly going through players' legs. You know, I I, I get that you know you're trying to block it and stuff like that, but. Just stand up. Just stand up and make it make it difficult. How many goals have we conceded this season where it's gone through players' legs? Um, and I'm not telling players to shut the legs and be like a statue, but it's so frustrating. Um, that's one goal I can't really blame Dubravka for because he, he, I do feel like he was a bit unsighted on that one. 
Um, but again, just unlucky. Just it, it, so annoying. But it, it it should have been prevented earlier on. As I say, I'm pretty sure Dan Burns left them. Dan Burns was at left back. Cole Palmer drifts in and Bruno needs to close quicker. If the defence had kind of moved out a little bit, if someone had closed, whether Botman could have closed them, I don't know. I think Botman was too far away. I do think it was Bruno. But Botman, straight through the legs and 2-1. And yeah, I just I just felt deflated again then. Um, <laughs> and I also felt stupid because I told my wife that uh, we had it all under control. And then 10 seconds later, he scored. Well, if your Lisa um, ha- was had any connections to Bournemouth or was a, a related in some fashion to Eddie Howe, there's a job for her in the back- backroom staff. <laughs> Pete, your thoughts on the second goal from Chelsea? So, <clears throat> I'm, I'm slightly different here. is because uh, I do think Dubravka's to blame. Um, I, I think that... Um, I, I think he plays a big part in it. I, I think the defending is poor. Uh, ro- ro- rewind a little bit. Let's go right back to the beginning. Five minutes before that goal, that goal was coming. The goal yeah. was coming. Um, and I think I might have even put it in the chat. That goal was coming five minutes before the ball even hit the net. And the reason being is because that was what? I think that was about the 58th minute. Was that 58? 57 like that? minutes, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah like We've not even hit the, the 60 minute mark. And I'm looking around at our players. I'm looking around at Dan Byrne, who looked out on his feet. He looked like he he'd, he'd looked like he played for 120 minutes. He looked shattered. I'm looking around at Miggy, he looked tired. I'm looking around at Willock, looked shattered. Understandably, working his way back into the team. Uh, I'm looking at Bruno, who's got energy to burn, who looked shattered, who at times in the build-up to that goal was walking. Um walking back out so it, there was a wave from Chelsea in out in out and every time they got the ball and were coming back in the midfield was only just walking out and they were walking out and to be fair Sky touched on it and I thought it was uh, more than a valid point we looked absolutely shattered and we looked like we just had no intensity no work rate we just didn't have it in us and we almost needed at that point, a Bruno or a Willett to go down in the middle, holding their head, so everyone could get a break. We needed that, and we just needed a smart play. Everyone looked shattered. Just go down. Just even if we get possession back, to put the ball out. Someone go down, and everyone get a drink of water, and let's just let's just take a breath. That that's kind of what we needed at that point. Um, but anyway, the wave comes back in. Yep, Palmer cuts inside. Um, shoots. I, I think it does go through his legs. I can't remember off the top of my head. But what what was what stuck out obvious to me before Palmer had even shot at goal. I'm looking at Dubravka. I'm thinking, you're not set here. You're you're out of position. And he was too far over. To be yeah. fair, he was too far over. And, yeah, and, and he was. He, he was. He was too far over one side of the pitch. Mm. So on one side of the goal. Sorry. So he's left three quarters of that goal to shoot at. And look at where the ball actually goes into the net. It's not right into the corner. It's not right past the post or right next to the post. It's actually closer to the middle of the goal than not. And actually, if he'd have shifted over two yards and been in the right position, standing position, it'd have saved it. It'd have have actually saved that. Because he actually does get down and get across, but it's too far away from him to get down and actually try and make a save. And those two yards are so crucial. Yes, it could have been defended better. The players were tired, understandably. You're absolutely right. And we'll talk about it in the next goal as well. Balls going through defenders' legs. It's happening far too often. Their stance, their body position, something has to change. Something has to change, whether they stand, whether they're standing with their legs closer together and they're trying to kind of almost be that block. So at least the goalkeeper can see the side of them. Whatever it is, I don't know. But something needs to change there because it's happening too often. Too often to be a coincidence for me. Um, but the goalkeeping, for me, is the reason why the ball goes in, in the net. Uh, uh, in the net, sorry. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Like, yes, Martin Dubravka has come in and made some good saves and he's had one or two good games. But I'm sorry. He's not good enough for Newcastle United. He is not good enough for Newcastle United. And I don't mean as a first-choice goalkeeper. I even mean as a backup. He's not good enough for Newcastle United. Um, 
And maybe that's me being biased because I didn't want him to come back to the club when after he come back from Man United. I've said it to you boys before, well documented. I didn't want him back. Um, and there's a reason. Um, he is finished for me at Newcastle United. And um, someone just put it in the chat. David Cook just put hurry up, Pope. Um, um, honestly, I was absolutely gutted to hear that Pope's now been kind of pushed back to April, um, as in coming back, uh, because we need him back. He is such an important goalkeeper for us. And those stats don't lie, boys. I don't know if you've got the pick, Daz, um, or whether you managed to put it up. I, I can grab it in a in a second because I do have I, I have uh, no, I have a, I have um, a tweet from Jordan that had some good stats on it. But are you, is it Dubrovka specific? You you have no, it, it's it's just the the Pope Dubravka stats. So from from up oh, up no, until um, so up until um, Pope got injured. Um, I, I, I've got it here. Uh, I managed to pull it off, and it's damning. It's absolutely damning. So I'll read it out, and then I'll put it on the screen um, in a bit. Um, so with Pope. Um, Goals conceded 14, which was the second best in the league. It's actually, I think, joint first at that point in which he got injured. Um, six clean sheets at that point, which was up there as one of the best in the league. Um, goals were uh, games where we conceded three or more goals. Um, one that was second in the league. Um, in terms of we we were we were one of the best, we conceded the, the least amount of those shots faced per game, eleven point six, which was fourth in the league at that point. Save ratio, seventy four percent. That was third in the league. Um, keeper sweeping, eleven. That was third in the league. Okay, in the fourteen games without Pope, goals conceded with Dubravka. So it was fourteen for Pope, thirty four for Dubravka. Nine, nine, 19th in the league so a second bottom clean sheets two in comparison to Pope six that's fifth we're 15th in the league for that goals where we games where we've conceded three or more goals eight eight games where we've conceded three or more goals out of that 14 that is unacceptable for a team that's fighting for European football, that is absolutely unacceptable. Um, and we're bottom, we're bottom of the league for that. We've conceded, we've been in more games and conceded three plus goals than any other team in the Premier League since Martin Dubravka's come on the team. That is not by coincidence. That isn't. That's way beyond that now. Um, shots faced per game. Pope's was 11.6, fourth in the league. Um, shots faced for Dubravka, 16.6. He's 15th in the league, so a big drop there. Save ratio per game, Pope's was 74. Dubravka's 67%, so not too far off, but enough to drop down significantly in the league. We've gone down to 11th there. And keeper sweeping, Pope's was 11. Uh, Dubravka's is 5, um, 17th in the league, uh, which tells its own story. There is a huge, huge problem here, lads. We've talked about it a bit here and there. Martin Dubravka is not good enough for Newcastle United. It is not. And, and Chris Dawson, I agree. that Those stats are damning. They come from Sky yesterday. When I, went, I actually took a picture on my TV when that came up because I was absolutely stunned at what I'd seen. And I knew it was bad. I knew the stats were bad, but I didn't know they were that bad. That's relegation. That's relegation level goalkeeping. I'm sorry. Um, it is so, so bad. And you, you, your your team, boys, your team is built on a goalkeeper. You look at the best, you look at the best teams. They're built on quality goalkeepers. We haven't got one. Well, we have, but he's injured. Uh, and, and our backups are not good enough. 100% agree, Pete. Let's finish this. Right, uh, 50. Eight minutes uh, saved on the line. Sterling ran, ran through, shot, Burns cleared it off the line. Um, but then Burn landed aw awkwardly. Yeah, I can't remember. It could have been from a corner, but uh, he was looked like he was carrying a bit of an injury then. And anyway, they, they had decided at this stage they were going to make a switch. So 69 minutes, uh, Kraft comes on, Burn is off, Anderson is on, and Miggy is off. Uh, last one, lads. Last Chelsea goal. Let's mm -hmm. get through this. Um, Mudrick scores. Uh, he won. Um, a bit of, oh, someone played the ball on the wing, uh, but M Mudrick picks it up. He kind of waltzes through, um, past Char and took it around dubs 
three one Chelsea. Chris, it was the, the, this what this one was the worst one for me. This was the worst one by far. Um, ball gets picked up quite uh, quite. I'm trying to think of my words. It gets picked up. Um, I keep wanting to say early in their half, but I don't mean that. Like, in the Chelsea half, quite deep into the Chelsea half, and then it gets pinged out to the left towards Nicholas Jackson. Now, Sven Botman, uh, and I, I said this two or three times to you in the game, not just about Botman, but about a few players. There's certain times where you've got to take a yellow. You've got to take one for the team, as they call it. You do not let the player go. You just don't. You've, if you've got to take the yellow, you've got to take, a mistake's been made earlier on. You've got to rectify it and make sure that the player doesn't get near the goal. You've just got to take him down. Pull his shirt, whip him up, do whatever you've got to do, stop him. And Botman doesn't do that. Uh, and then he gets into a, you know, he gets into a foot race with Nicholas Jackson, which he's not going to win, um, quite simply. And he didn't. Um, ball gets played into the box. Um, so Botman's been left, hung up to dry. Uh, on our right wing, their left wing. Ball gets played into the box. Do not know what Fabian Charles doing. Like, Mudrick picks it up. I wouldn't mind. It's two poor touches from Mudrick. Poor touches. And Charles, you know, is feated everywhere. Doesn't know what he's doing. Mudrick somehow ends up with the ball. And then the biggest frustration for me from, from, from yesterday um, in terms of Martin Zabravka is he sees this happening in front of him. So this is all unfolding in front of him. Now, for me, I'm not a goalkeeper, so you know, maybe maybe other people have got an opinion on it. But for me, he's got to smell that danger. He's got to see that something's not quite right. Come off your line a little bit. But anyway, he stays on his line. He's obviously watching. And then Mudrick makes it through Shah. And then he's like, oh, should I go? Oh, uh, uh, uh. And before he knows it, he comes out too late. Mudrick rounds him, puts it in. And honestly, like, you can blame Botman, you can blame Shaw, because Dubravka should never have been put in that position. It was terrible defending. Um, but again, Martin Dubravka, he's, he's just made it so easy for Mudrick. And then and then oh, the worst thing was, you know, um, I'm sure, I think it was Gary Neville saying, oh, is this, is this you know, is this going to kickstart his career at Chelsea now? And, and I'm thinking, are you, are you watching the same game? Like, he's just had the most fortunate bit of luck. He's had two poor touches, which we've let him get away with. And then he's rounded the keeper because the keeper's come off the line too late. And it's just been easy for him. Don't get me wrong, Mudrick's got electric pace. But Martin Zabavka made that very easy for him. And um, yeah, and then Gary Neville starts waxing lyrical about, you know, Mikhail and Mudrick turning his career around. And this is going to be <clears throat> now. This is where we see the real Mikhail and Mudrick. Don't know where he got that from. Um, and yeah, just really disappointing goal to concede. And it capped off a really, really poor performance from our defence, from Martin Dubravka. Mm. Um, I'm not even going to get into the midfield with the likes of Sean Longstaff. I'm not even going to go there because he, he may as well have not been on the pitch for me. Um, really, really frustrating. But yeah, poor goal to concede and just kind of sum the night up. And I think I think that's where, um, <laughs> I don't know whether you said it or not, Pete, but you were like, I just want the season to end now. Because it was just, yeah. it just sums our season up. You know, we had the Gordon injury and then we're making stupid mistakes like that. Chelsea, we made Chelsea look half decent last night. And, <laughs> and they're really not. They're really not. They're not a good team. Um, so, yeah, very disappointed and 3 1. And I'm just thinking, I just want to turn the telly off at this point. As as Pete is crying there, I know Pete, you, you uploaded that that picture that you're talking about just before there. So that, that, that's ah, there let's go. show that, and you can link it into the goal. <laughs> yeah, link it into how rubbish our goalkeeper is currently. Um, yeah, <clears throat> Chris. Yeah, uh, you you mentioned about Devaka. I w I was more annoyed with Shaw at the time, letting it go mm -hmm. through his legs. I, I thought yeah, Shaw was yeah. um, going through his lazy phase. I thought a few of them were. That goal just typified the fact that a few of them, their heads had gone. They, yeah, they'd switched oh, off. Definitely. Like yeah. in, in their minds, even there, even though even at two one, in their minds they were thinking the game's done. Like they, they, yeah, they right, and, and and the the lack of will to defend that ball um, typifies it all. Uh, you talked about Sean Longstaff. Um, his he he he's a guy that is in that team 
to run all day for you, to work hard, to win the ball back, to never give up uh, a loose ball or, or, or an opportunity to nick the ball in. All he's done is just give up. Um, after that, the way he walt, um, Mudrich, uh, just uh, Mudrich waltzes by three midfielders, pops it through Shah's legs. And it's just that, you know what? Before I even get to the Dubravka part, it's the reaction of the players. So he waltzes by the three midfielders and they all just stand there. They all stood there on, on the on the semicircle. They all just stood there just watching. There's no, I need to get back in. Whether you get there or not, just show, show, show some will. Shaw gets megged and he just stands there and he just he like he, I watched it from behind the goal and he he gets megged and he kind of just does this. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I better react to this. I better yeah, react to this. Yeah, it, yeah. There's no, there's no. Yeah. I need to get back. I need yeah. to get back in. There's yeah. like it's that it's that just, and the arms, the yeah, arms, resignation. Like knows yeah. that it's going in. Just give up. It just, it just a really poor mentality. But the goalkeeping, Chris. I'm sorry. I, I I was focused on Shaw. It is horrendous, mate. It is absolutely so horrendous. So and you know what? I watched it about an hour ago. I watched I watched that second half, and I didn't realize how bad it was. And I've just seen it again, just to, just to check that it was actually that bad, just to triple check. But you are absolutely right. It was horrendous goalkeeper. And someone put in the chat that he does it all the time. But we know this. Yeah. Go back and watch him under Rafa. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. It's, it's just, oh, my God. Please. I don't want to give up on this season, boys. I really don't. But when I see stuff like that, it just makes me think, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Like, we're so we're so fortunate, Pete. That and 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 this was this was going to be my positivity call. We're so we're so lucky that we're actually not that far away. I know we keep saying it, but we're not that far away, and we've got a decent little run of games. But we've got we've really got to start waking up. Got to wake up because last night's performance was just it, it, it's oh, it's just so frustrating because it just feels like you know you were saying Pete about the players being tired it feels like they're lethargic they're just going through the motions mm. it's like they're feeling how we're feeling they're just like oh wrap the season up you know well oh, let's let's just draw a line under it and go you know but there's an opportunity there for us to get up to six I'd say um it's looking slimmer now we've had that defeat don't get me wrong but we've still got nine games left you know and we've got to play Man United we've got to play Tottenham 10 10 sorry yeah yeah, there's yeah. still there's still chances. There really is, but we've got mm. to start picking these points up, and um, we've got we've got to start winning the winning these games because sooner or later, you know, we could then find ourselves 11th, 12th, 13th, and then we're going to be going. Oh, we still we still could get six, and it will just go on yeah. and on and on and on, and it's just it's just so annoying. Chelsea, and don't let it get you, lads. Though that, that's the thing because as I, I said know. to you in in, I in in the chat, and I said it like a couple of months ago, stepping stone season. There'd be yeah. highs, there's going to be lows, this roller coaster, and just <laughs> take what we're given now at this stage, just ride it, you ride know, it out. You know what, boys? Like, this is the thing that was kind of going through my head as I was as I'm watching, and I'm going back to the I'm going back to the second goal now, like the the, the Cole Palmer goal. I'm I'm watching that goal unfold, and I've said to you boys, and I've said these players look absolutely shattered. At 57 minutes. Uh, is that right? That's the goal, 57 minutes. At 57, 57 minutes to go, yeah. I remember so, your message around then, yeah. Yeah, so, so it was around that sort of time in the game, they looked absolutely shattered and out of their feet. Even the likes of me that runs all day for you, Bruno, they look shattered. And they go and waltz in and score that goal. But lads, they had, they had about eight or nine days to prepare for that game. It was a Monday night kickoff. We yeah. played Wolves on the Saturday at three o'clock. Like, I, like, okay, I'm just thinking, how are these boys tired? How are these boys so shattered after 60 minutes? I get it. November, December, I understand it. Champions League, Carabao Cup, quarterfinals, Wednesday. Saturday, Tuesday, Sunday, whatever it was, constant, constant with, with no players to choose from. We've got some of those players back and these boys are having full week training. How are they shattered at 60 minutes? I, I don't, I don't, that's yeah. the thing in my mind that frustrates the hell out of me. How are these boys tired? Willock I get, just, just coming back in. 
But Isaac's had a number of games now playing regular, at least 60, 70 minutes. You've got like Gordon, of, of course, got injured, but Murphy is fit as a fiddle. Miggy, fit as a fiddle. You know, Longs has played every minute under the sun, and I'm not having this ankle injury, playing injured. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. He's just rubbish at the moment. Nothing to do with his ankle. He's just rubbish, right? Playing absolute rubbish football. I'm sorry. I'm not having it. It's no excuse. If he's if he's if he's if he's un- that unfit, you've got a young lad, Lewis Miley, who again, by the yeah. way, has another assist to his name that comes on that can go and play and do more than Sean Longstaff. There's no excuses there, right? These players have had enough time on the training ground. To do to, to be fit and ready to run their heart out for ninety minutes. I don't buy it. I don't get it. And I don't know what you no. do. You do you disagree? I, I, no, I, I I agree with what you're saying, Pete. The only one I can give any kind of uh, an excuse to is Bruno because he his wife was only after giving uh, giving birth. So yeah. uh, and he he even got an assist. <laughs> You know? cool. And he didn't get a yellow card. He, he he's playing within himself though. Yeah. Uh, but um, what to go? Yeah. yeah. Well, a li- as long as he doesn't get injured, oh. uh, we'll get to see him against West Ham. Um, right, that's <laughs> where we will move on because this yeah. game is not over yet, or is it? Um, you- so Newcastle didn't fall, fall asleep. Speaking about sleep, because uh, Bruno gets robbed then at this stage as well. Uh, that's when robs the ball off him. There was no no shout uh, house or anything like that. I remember seventy four minutes. Uh, Miley is on. Bruno is off. No yellows, as I said. White is on. Willock is off. I said at this point Newcastle can see the game. Um, but eighty nine minutes. Um, Murphy with a wonder goal, top corner, making it 3-2. Maybe there's a chance, but uh, yeah. What do you make of Murphy's goal, lads? Go on, Chris, fella. I, uh, that, that reaction um, that, yeah. that Jacob Murphy's doing there, like, fantastic. What a finish. Absolutely fantastic finish. Um, and I did kind of think, <laughs> I was kind of thinking to myself, should have started him. Um, but now, it, it, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant finish. Um, and I think I think he did get a little bit of credit off the off the lads in the Sky Studio uh, for that. But yeah, fantastic finish. Um, but unfortunately, the, the game was done by them. Um, so it was it was a shame. I'm, I'm not gonna not gonna dwell on it too much. But you know, Miley showing the composure, nice little simple ball into Murphy, beats Kukurea. I think I think he actually spun him. Um, Kukurea, he, Kukurea was like obviously trying to block him. He spins around him, uh, looks up, gets his shot off. I'll tell you what, he, I bet if he'd done that another hundred times, he'd only hit about three of them in. Uh, because that, that was a it was some finish at the near post. Petrovic had no chance getting to that, but yeah, fantastic finish. But just a shame that it uh, didn't mean anything in the end. Pete Murphy's goal, great finish, great finish. Um I just wish we'd have had more of that during the game. Um, just putting putting shots onto that goalkeeper, um, giving them something to, something to think about. If you go back and watch over the course of the game, we get into decent <clears throat> positions on the edge of the area, but we just sometimes we just want to play the most difficult ball, or we want to walk it in. And sometimes it's just very simple, just like like Alexander Isak did, just shift the ball and have a pop at goal. Mm. You never know. Like some of the goals that Chelsea have conceded recently are similar to us. Deflections going into the other side. You know, that mean just slight mistakes or or unsighting the goalkeeper. It's exactly the same as us. So put them under pressure. Put a shot towards goal. I, I don't really remember too many direct shots towards goal other than the two that we scored. So we've actually given the goalkeeper a relatively comfortable game. <laughs> Um, who isn't the best goalkeeper. He's okay. He's better than what they, they already had. Um, I think it's better than Sanchez, but he's not great. And I just think we we got they, they got off far too lightly, but it was a great strike. And uh, yeah, why not play him in the next game, Chris? Why not? And I don't mean, I don't mean the FA Cup quarterfinals. Play him in that by all means. I mean, why not start him? Against West Ham, we, we might not have a choice, in, in all honesty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, get to that. But, 
Yeah, but the why not give him an opportunity? Because as you you said, and you're right, he, he, it was unlucky for him to get dropped really to the bench. I oh, agree. Leon, Leon, so I didn't, I, I wasn't aware of that, Leon. No. Okay. Well, maybe, <clears throat> maybe that's why then. That makes sense. Mm. Fair play. But then you've got to ask the question, why? Why is he not trained all week? If it's something family related or personal, then that's fine. But if it's something related to, you know, an injury or managing an injury, like what's happened there? Why is it happening? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Right. That's it. Three two. Let's let's shortly we'll never have to talk about this game ever again. But some key words that, that, that were circulating about was long staff, sloppy, as I refer to him. There's a lot of talk there of people saying, Oh, get rid of Eddie, Eddie out, new manager, blah 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 blah. Uh that talk Tino. Uh, oh, we didn't mention Tino, but he t- he had a brilliant game and, and people had in the chat as well. He did get kicked a bit. He he was he was the best player on the pitch. Um Botman, what's happened? What what's what's going on? Um, is he still injured? Is he still carrying that injury? Blah blah blah. So we're still missing Pope. Then linking into to some of the the stats. I'm going to bring up some some Jordan put up. Uh, UCAS Premier League form since they beat Manchester United on the second of December, gone from fifth to tenth. Uh, fourteen points from fourteen games. Uh, won four, drew two, lost eight. Goals for for 27, goals against 34, goal difference minus seven, and 14th in the table since then. Ah, okay. Anyway, uh, a lot of uh, that's an interesting tweet from Jordan. It just shows you highlights how how bad it's gone. It's it's it, it's it's kind of crazy to think that uh, it's still the same season that we're beating PSG and nearly beating them in Paris as well. But one of the other talking points, uh, and I think we'll come to this now, is Mr. Anthony Gordon. And uh, I know it's kind of changed during the day. Some people say no, he's out for the season. Some people is saying he's out for six or seven months. The scans, uh, I believe, aren't, uh, results aren't back yet, but uh, whether he'll be out for a long time, a short time, we see him against West Ham. Definitely won't, won't see him, I imagine, against City. But thoughts on, on the, the latest talk uh, on Anthony Gordon, that's Um, I, I tweeted out uh, not long before the show when all of, all of it came out. I think it was uh, NFC Gallagher that put it out initially saying six to seven months. A lot of people have kind of jumped on that. Um, then you had the rider, the Chronicle coming out saying that they the club don't think it's as bad as first feared um, and that they're going to be having scans this week at the training ground. What I'd say is, is that we've just got to wait and see. But, um, I watched it back again, and um, he, he he actually plays on for quite a while, and doesn't look to be he, he like he, he he just goes for a run to press the ball. I think Shaw plays a long ball across. He goes for a run, and it's just as he ends the run, it's almost like his knee kind of jolts slightly, and he pulls up, and and he's obviously he's obviously flexing it. But then he gives the he gives the thumbs up to the to the coaching staff and, and their physios. He gives it up two or three times to say, I'm okay, I'm okay. He carries on, carries on. Very, very quickly he gets pulled to the other side because what happens is they start loading Newcastle's left hand side and he ain't running back. Now, it didn't help that at that point Willock wasn't doing the running back either. So Byrne was massively isolated at that point, whereas against Wolves, Willett was making the runs back even when Gordon wasn't or they were alternating. It, none of them were running back or getting back into that position, which opened up so much space for them. So they had to change things. And actually, fair play to Miggy when he came, when he went onto that side, I thought he did well. I thought he played much better there on that left-hand side and tracked better and did a better job for the team than he did on the, uh, on the right-hand side. Um... But when they pulled him onto this left hand side, he, he played okay. He was he was making sprints. He was passing the ball. He tried to put a ball in behind to Isaac, and then all of a sudden, it's the knock from behind from um, I can't remember who it was. Now. I'm not sure if it was Gusto. Um, someone on that left hand side. It might, no, it might be Kukurea because Kukurea was left back. Mm-hmm. Has gone gone in the back of him, and then he's gone down. And even then, he doesn't look concerned. But it's as he goes to stand up and he goes oh, and he holds something straight the way. And then he was like, you can hear him mouthing. He's like, he's like, come on, like I can't play anymore. 
Yeah, and he literally yeah. mouths that. He mouths that I can't play. And at that point, they just need to get him off. Like, if he can't play, get him off, make the sub. What the physio is doing, I've got no idea. Um, and if that turns out to be something serious and that movement that he does there made that injury worse, then he's got a lot to answer for. Because I'm telling you now, as a physio, he should not have been doing that range of movement that quickly. Not in my, And I'm not, I'm not a physio, so I might be wrong. But I'm looking at that situation. He's saying he's got a problem with his knee. I, I don't think personally that I would be moving that knee as, as quickly or as like, um, ferocious is not the right word, but is it as quickly as he was in that position to see the move? It, it was very vigorous, wasn't it? He yeah. just kind of extended his leg and then Gordon's yeah. like, whoa, what are you doing? And like, you're right, you're absolutely right, Pete. It, it, it looked like, um, I've, I've described it before in the chat, what was it? Uh, like a misjudgment. It was a misjudgment from the physio when you can see Gordon like, mate, what are you doing? And like it proper is really is. Yeah. So a bit like like a comedy sketch where they, they the stretcher yeah. comes out and then the, the guy's a the stretcher, they drop the guy off the stretcher. Yeah, that that kind of uh yeah. um right, yeah. So let let's Chris, you want to say anything about, about Gordon uh before we move on from that topic? I I I haven't really got much else to add from what Pete said. All all that I will say is um he's, he's gonna be a massive miss. If he's missing for the rest of the season, <clears> it's a massive miss. And let's hope, let's hope he doesn't miss the start of next season as well. And this six, seven month rumor isn't true because if he if he's missing at the start of the season, it's a huge miss. And not not only that, for the remainder of the season, if we've got Gordon out, let's hope Harvey Barnes is not for the period of time as well. Because then all yeah. of a sudden we've ended up with two left wingers to now none again. Um, I know Elliot Anderson come back and he he was trying his best when he come on, and I noticed he came on left wing um, too little, too late at that point, but. Um, yeah, Finger, uh, fingers crossed time, I think, on Barnes and Gordon. Mm, yeah, he couldn't make it up, could you? Especially in mm. the article that he had, uh, the interview that he gave as well. Not not seeing yeah. the medical team. And... In, front of, in front of Southgate as well. He, he'd, have been, yeah. he'd have been disappointed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And Tino might get into the... Um, see those reactions there? See that? Catching that? Um, yeah, um... Yeah, Tino might get into the England squad as well. But this, I want to go to this next. Uh, this is um, what Eddie, I didn't hear this, but I, because uh, uh, I was, I think I, I just went straight to bed after that, after that game. I just had enough. Uh, but um, this is what, what Eddie Howe says, uh, and I don't agree with this. Uh, on, uh, undefeated Chelsea, I thought we were in the game all the way through. We were good in lots of aspects of our play, competitive and on the front foot. But then you analyze the goals we concede, and they're nowhere near good enough. You can't concede goals like that and expect to win. Don't agree with that. No, neither. I, I. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't. Um, Sugar quarters. I wouldn't analyze that game and say we were on the front foot. For me, I, I just don't think we were. There was periods where we looked half decent. Don't get me wrong. Um, and I agree when he says that, you know, we can't concede goals like that and expect to win. Absolutely. But to say to say we were um, on the front foot, I, I, I don't think. I mean, boys, tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I, I just no. don't think we were. I think we looked lethargic, slow. At times, I felt like we were second best. Um, but that that's how I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> In the first half, I, watching the game live, I, I didn't think I didn't think we played well. Um, having watched it back again, I'm talking the first half in isolation. I actually thought we played better than I thought we did live. Um, having watched the game back, but the, the it's for a team for a team that's that scored the amount of goals that we've scored, we don't we don't do enough for me in that final third. We actually have quite a few. Uh, if you're if you're talking from box to box, I don't think we were too bad. Um, I, I think you know defensively we're a bit all over the place for the goal. There's a couple of opportunities that were, you know, that, that were comfortably safe from Dubravka. But all in all, we I think we I thought after that point we 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 defended and got rid of the ball quite well. First half in isolation. From an attacking point, I thought we we created four or five good openings where we get behind them and we get into the position either the right or left to enter the box to enter that final phase 
And the problem is, is that we don't do enough with it. So in the before before Gordon's injury, he makes he gets released two or three times down that down that left hand side, and he does the same thing. And I keep saying to you boys, he does the same thing over and over again. He gets down that right hand side and he cuts into the right inside onto his right every time. They they're coming wise to it. They know what he's going to do. It's too predictable. He doesn't once go down the left hand side and just give them a something something to something different to think about. You've got to mix it up. You've got to go down the left sometimes and then just drop just just whip the ball back into the area on your left on your left foot just to keep the fullback guessing. He doesn't do it. Similar with Miggy, always cuts back on his left, but we know this. Never drives down that side. And so it's very predictable. We don't get enough balls into the box. At the point in which he switches them and Miggy is then on the left. Miggy then becomes more direct and he actually improves things a little bit more. Um, but it, again, it's that final third and it's really, really hard if you're a striker. If you're Alexander Izak, you cannot make runs into the box because you don't know whether you're even going to get the ball. You, If, if you've got wingers, you know we're going to whip that ball into the box like Murphy did against Wolves. You know he can be there. But with Gordon and with Miggy, you don't know that they're going to do that. So it's very hard for a striker to make runs. And I think that's the big thing. Because even though we've scored so many goals, we could score so many more. And that's my one thing that really annoyed me. But I just think, going back to Eddie Howe's point, I, there were, there were, we did some good work in between in that first half. Um, but we weren't clinical enough. We weren't good enough with the ball in attacking areas. In the second half, not a chance. Not a chance. We were poor in the second half. Really, really poor. Right. Let's get to some questions. Um, who has got the questions? Um, well, I'll just have a look here. First of all, we've got a couple of new members. Uh, Nicholas Heads, um, thank you for becoming a loaded ultra, along with uh, Dunnell. Um, Dunnell, uh, You've been a member before. Um, rejoining us as a load of ultra, so thank you very much for your support with that. Um, Jeez, just before yeah. we go into questions, um, and, and as we're talking about members, I believe I could be wrong, but I believe Gally is in the chat and he says, Hi, all are we crap again now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gally, Gally was one of our members' draw winners, and um, Gally sent in a picture. Um, of him with, with his kids getting 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 Yay. the new off the members show. <laughs> so, Brilliant. Lovely, lovely for sending that in, Andrew. Thank you very much, mate. Really glad uh, that you managed to get the shirts looking looking there uh, all matching and fantastic there, mate. But yeah, really, really, really pleased that you could get the uh, get the kits and um yeah, make sure you're in the draw for the next one as well. But yeah, really nice to see yes. you, mate, and thank you very much for sending the pitch in. And they might get a game. Pretty soon, the way it's working out as well. Uh, uh, those yeah. kids of yours. Um, but yeah, not lovely to see that. Uh, nice one, Gally. Um, right. More questions? Um, uh, yeah, let's just rip the band aid off with this one. There's a few that. Uh, <laughs> well, the, the, the first one we've kind of answered. I uh, can't understand you know, any saying that we played well. Uh, we we're just kind of covering that. A, a little bit there, but Tom Dixon just comes straight in with it. Do you think Howe has a future at Newcastle United? Um, the, all of the talk yesterday uh, after the game, uh, for various different reasons, was about Eddie Howe. So, boys, what are your thoughts on the situation? Well, I saw what, uh, what um, Luke uh, put out as well, but um, yeah, Eddie, Eddie Howe, uh, we're with Howe uh, for the rest of the season. Um, I myself would look at things uh, at, at come the summer, but everything the way it is now, everything's all centered on on Eddie Howe. It, it, it's this, he, he's he's he is the centerpiece of everything. Where where Dan Escher was was talking about being the the wheel uh, 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 and the spokes link and everything. It's everything's linked to Eddie Howe now. He's got a bigger role than he than he ever had, I think, in Newcastle. So I don't think they'll they'll remove him from from that from that position come the, come the summer uh, and we have to get through um, uh, with a massive summer of of change uh, both outgoings and ingoings which we will soon talk about uh, as well but um um so i, I think he's he's here for the, obviously the rest of the season 
he's here for the summer. Then it's it's how it goes in in the first ten to the first half of the season. It cannot be a season like like this and uh, next next season. And it, it definitely gone by Christmas if if it's looking anything like this um, for me. Um, well, Harry Robertson put very similar. Is um, is it time for how to go in the summer? Big decisions from the club, but Chris, I'll um, on Eddie Howe, just something slightly different. Um, Gary D puts in there, lads, are you concerned that Eddie will be given a substantial amount to spend in the summer? And if performances don't pick up, um, Eddie goes and the new manager has nothing to spend due to FFP profit and sustainability. So, again, not only do you think he'll go, are you worried about that particular question about being given the war chest in the summer potentially um, and then not sticking around long enough to see the fruits of that labour? Fantastic question from Gary, to be fair. Um, it's something that we've not really spoken about. And um, it's, a, it's a very interesting one, Gary. And I think this is why... Um, this is why Eddie is part of the he's part of the transfer board, and um, but he doesn't he doesn't have sole responsibility of the transfers, and I think this is the reason why because, you know, you're right. If we were to give him two or three hundred million and he buys the exact players that he wants, uh, that wouldn't necessarily work because you know football changes, things change very quick in football, is what I'd say. And um, you know, if Eddie isn't the right guy going forward, we, what we don't want is four, five, six Eddie Howe type signings to the new managers. Like, well, wh why did you sign him? Um, that's why I do believe there is a transfer committee um, on whether Eddie Eddie will be given the money. I think I think the coffers will be open if if Eddie's here in the summer. And I'm not saying that very cryptically, as in I don't expect him to be here. It will depend what happens this summer and it'll depend how the owners want to go forward. I, I agree with what Daz says in that if we start the season as we're ending this season, seemingly, uh, I know there's still 10 games to go, but if we start the season as we, uh, we've we ended this season, then Eddie, I won't be here very long because I think I think this is his pass. This is his, this is his buy, if you like. Uh, but next season, it'll be like, right, okay, that blips out the way, that weird injury problem that you've had all last season it's it's time for the fresh now no excuses no one's tired um you know results have got to really got to turn miles will he be given the time i don't know um i suppose that's for for pif and you know the the board to kind of decide um it's a, it's a difficult one for me um and, and i'm going to sound like a broken record here the fact that Eddie wasn't backed in January still still gives concerns to me. Um, I know some people say that the reason he wasn't given the money is one, we didn't have the money, or two, we were saving um, for the summer particularly, and that could well be the case. Um, you know, I, obviously, I don't know. I just felt like Eddie needed some kind of backing, and it just the alarm bells rang for me because there was an opportunity, and there still is, but. For me in January, there was an opportunity to bring one or two even loan signings in, just something to bridge that gap, and that didn't happen. And that's that's my concern. In that, have the ball gone? Do you know what? Keep the powder dry. In the summer, we're going big with X. I I, I don't know, but Eddie Howe needs to turn this round. And you know, I f I kind of feel like a little bit fickle, and that's why I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can. Because obviously, after that Wolves game, I was like, right. We're back now. Let's let's do it. And we've had another result like this. Um, and it's not just the perform, it's not just the results, it's the performance for me that's really got me. Um and no doubt Eddie Howe probably feels the same. Eddie Eddie Howe. I'm I'm hoping Eddie Howe is looking at this squad now, looking at these players and thinking, do you know what? Daz, you, you keep using this word. This is the word of 2024. It's time to be ruthless. And if he's not ruthless, Pete's words originally. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Hold on a second. Yeah, sorry, Pete. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm not stealing sorry. that one. Sorry, um, but yeah, it, it's time to be ruthless. And if if he's not ruthless enough, I, I think it'll bite him on the backside. I think the owners will probably, you know, the owners have probably been having discussions already and saying, you know, what what are your plans? What do you want them to do? And if Eddie's like, oh, give him a bit. Oh, I want to keep him on the squad. He's brilliant and all that. You know, I don't think that'll do him any favours. It's time to cut some loose. Um, we've seen Emil Kraft get an extension. We've seen Jamal Lascelles get an extension. And we've already talked about the fact that that's probably wise because 
you can't shift 11 out and bring 11 in. It's just not going to happen. Um, so there is certain players that will get a little bit of extra time, but he's got to be ruthless with the likes of your Matt Ritchie's, your Paul Dummett's, etc. And that's if he's given the opportunity. So in a long roundabout way, Gary, um, I think I think there's every chance that Eddie will be here, but it, for me, it depends on how the season finishes. Um, and also, if he is still in the job, he's I would say he's maybe got 10 games to really keep hold of his job because if it carries on the way it is now, I don't think he'll be. I don't think he'll he'll last very long next season. I'm going to come in on one last thing. I'm going to cut that ten game down to five if he does one of two things: brings in a couple of players from Bournemouth and gives Matt, Matt Ritchie an extended contract. Bring bring uh, bring uh, Ritchie to Bournemouth. No, bring Bournemouth to, to Ritchie. Fuck that shit. Uh, th- something has to change. So I. Uh, he can't go down that road, and I hope that he that, that he that he doesn't. Um, yeah, sorry. Carry on. No, uh, I I don't think. Well, it's already been confirmed today. Well, not confirmed. Um, reported on, should we say, um, that Luke Edwards has said that the club um, are behind Eddie Howe. He'll be in charge next season. Um, that's as far as they see it. Um, he'll be he'll be in charge of the club. He'll get the summer. Um, that's what he's reporting uh, with all the question marks. Um, look, I'll just reiterate what I what I tweeted out last night. Uh, I was very very clear on it. Is that um, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're Eddie Howe, whether you're Pep Guardiola, whether you're you know um, David Moyes, um, Deserby, whoever it is. If you're continuing to make the same mistakes, um, eventually you will lose your job. It's as simple as that. Um, and for me, the big mistakes that he's making right now um, are uh, tactical and personnel. Um, not playing the right players in certain games, tactically not setting us up right um, against certain teams. Now, looking at the way uh, every everybody, everybody knew or expected Newcastle United to play a certain way. Everybody in the studio... Ian Wright, Jamie Carragher, saying the same. Sit deep, pick them off. It worked at Wolves, played really well at Wolves, gone back to basics. It will win you the game. Why? It's because it's the one way that Chelsea don't like to play against. They don't like to play against it. Um, and, and they don't find it easy to find those gaps in behind. And you could even see it. They were struggling even to score with his going gung-ho and going intense and press it. Like they struggled with that. But the fact that we didn't sit in for the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, make it really awkward for Chelsea, get their fans on their back because they're not getting they're not getting in or they're not looking like they're gonna score, and then trying to pick them off, like we did against Wolves, came to our detriment because their goal was exactly what we did to Wolves in the game last weekend. Is that they went and caught us on the break and nicked a goal, and then they were in front. Yes. Um, we equalised, but they did the same again. We just we just allowed them to counter-attack and counter-attack and counter-attack, and we can't do it. We haven't got the goalkeeper to do it, first and foremost, to play such a high line. We haven't got the centre-backs to do it, because both of them are not as fast, or not as fast as each other. We, we You need one pacey centre-back and one centre-back that's maybe not as, as pacey, but is more intelligent, more manoeuvrable on the ball. Playing them both together with such a high line isn't great for Newcastle United, and it isn't. You have to have really fast fullbacks to cover that, and we don't. Livermento, yes, but nine times out of ten, it's Burn and Trippier, and they're not fast either. So it just doesn't work. And I just wanted to see Eddie Howe place a different way to get his points on the board. It's the most important thing right now, but there just seems to be and you, everyone that, that that knows me for the last three years, I've talked about Eddie Howe in a real, real positive light. And I really, I, I do. And I still think he can do the job at Newcastle United. But there seems to be an air of stubbornness about him where it's going to be his way. I'm going to do it my way. And it's going, it's going to work this way. Mm. But that's not how the top managers work. The top managers have to change it sometimes to get results. Sometimes they'll have to go, you know what? We need to sit in. We need to sit in and do the job and make it difficult. Just like 
what he did against Villa at Villa Park. He never plays five at the back, but he knew in order to get the result there, he had to do that because they were going to go in. And he made the right decision there. And I thought that was the change. But he's reverted back to type again. And that will end up being his downfall if he doesn't learn from those mistakes. Because he's still young in the game. He's 46 years old, right? He's still young at playing at the top level of football. But he has to learn. If he doesn't keep learning um, and, and changing and evolving, he is going to be in the same position where we are losing games where we could have won that game. That game was winnable. That was a winnable game. I've, I've got Chelsea fans that have been messaging me laughing because they know how shit they were yesterday. Yeah. And Chelsea not, Chelsea not celebrating a great win and a great performance. They're laughing because they're thinking to themselves, how did we win that? I spoke to Charlie. Charlie dropped me a message this morning and he was like, it, was, it wasn't, eh, we beat you, you're rubbish. It was both teams were really poor. Both teams were really poor. And we like, but, but you were just worse. That was what Charlie said as a Chelsea fan. Both teams were poor, but you were just worse. Imagine that, knowing that, that we, where so many teams have toppled Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, that we've gone and we've rolled over to them, a game that was winnable. And that's what I'm not happy with. That's what frustrates me. We can't afford for that to keep happening. Ultimately, yes, he'll probably be in charge in the summer. The only thing that stops that is PIF. And nobody knows what they're thinking right now. So it's just, it, Amanda Staveley, Megan Gaddusi, uh, Jamie Rubin, fine. They want him in charge, no problem. But they're not the majority <clears throat> stakeholder. They're not the majority owners of Newcastle United. And all it takes is for one phone call and one decision to be made to say, we need to change here. We need a top-level manager to come in now and revamp this team. And that decision gets made. So I can't 100% sit here with confidence that Eddie Howe will be manager next season because I don't know what PIF are thinking right now. Mm. No. Agreed. Yeah, the decision could be just taken out of their hands uh, for sure. Do you think, but, do you think it'll, and this is just a little, a little extra comment on that. Do you think, um, do you think if a top manager becomes available and obviously Liverpool go in for them, do you think that that forces our hand in any way? In terms of oh, you know, a managers, you know, like when Jurgen Klopp became available, Liverpool went all in on him because they wanted them. Do you think if a top manager became available and you know they wanted to come to the Premier League, do you think that would factor in in PIF's thoughts in that? Hang on, we don't want him to go to Liverpool. Let's see if we can get him to come here. Do you think? Do you think that's an option? No, I don't. I don't. I, I think it, it, they'll 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 go with their own decisions, and it's only when when they make the decision to get. It, if they were to make the decision to get rid of Eddie Howe, that they'd, they'd be lining someone up then. Uh, I don't think Liverpool will come into the equation. They're, they're in a, a different... At the moment, they're in a, a different place, totally. Hopefully, they come down a few levels now. But mm -hmm. maybe not either with who's coming in to run the show in the background. There's a small window. Um, from the end of the season up until mid to end of June is if there's any time to make a change, it's then. Um, if if we're getting to pre-season training and Ed Howe's still in charge, he's manager. He'll start the season. He'll, he'll be there at Newcastle United. I think if they're going to make that decision, they'll make it within the first two weeks of the season finishing because PIF will do their assessment of the season. They will re review everything and make their own judgments on whether it's been a successful season, reasons why it's not been, and all or all the other bits in between. Um, so I think if it's going to happen, it'll be a swift process because they'll want to do, just like they're doing for the sporting director's role now, they'll want to do their due diligence in that to make sure that they're getting the best manager possible, just like they want the best sporting director possible. So um, if that was to be the case, and Eddie Howe isn't the guy moving forward, I think we'd know about it quite soon after the season finished. Maybe maybe even towards the end, if we've got nothing to play for, by the time we're going last couple of games, last game or so, I think at that point we, 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 may, we may have rumblings or certainly noises of that being the case. But at this moment in time, it doesn't seem like that. Mm -hmm. Interesting next two games ahead with the, the Man City one, the FA Cup. Um, going to be a tall order. And then the West Ham one. Uh, who are direct rival for that 
six, seven players. Mm. Um, any more questions, lads? You want to go, Jack? Seb, Seb's got a question here. Um, is there too much pressure on Botman to be the main centre back? Does he need competition? I've heard criticism of him recently, but I'm still leaning uh, in that regard. Um, what are your thoughts about Botman? Is, it, is, the, is the criticism of him too harsh? No, I suppose it, Botman has been at, came in and he was at that level. It's just that his performances recently are well, well down below what, what, what his standards are. Um, so he, he's still our, our main man. And we need to, what we, we know, we need to, to find the other main man who's going to partner him for, for years to come. Like Char has been, has been class this season. But there's been games where where he's he's got missing as well, and especially if we go two goals behind, his his head does drop. I, f- I found that with him for for a while. Uh, but other th- other things that Shar offers is absolutely unbelievable. Um, so yeah, he, he's our main man. It's just I, I'm, I'm really I, th- I think that that's going to be the most difficult uh, transfer for us to, to bring in uh, someone that that can can do what what uh, Shar does, but is younger. Uh, and 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 a few more things, and and, and even people quicker. we've talked about in the past, yeah, quicker. Uh, even people we and I can score a few goals as well, and pick that that pass like like he does. Yeah, uh, uh, people we've looked at before as well, uh, talking about. I'm not sure they can do what what Char does. Um, uh, so it, it it's a difficult one to, to to bring in. Interesting to see who they who they fill that void with. Mm. It's two things for me. I think um, I think Seb makes a good point, but it's two things for me. I think the first thing is that, and I, I, I liken this. Um, my mates always take the mech out of me for for comparing Botman to Van Dyke. Um, but I remember when Van Dyke came back from that nasty injury, where when he when he had that tackle from Pickford in the derby, um, he struggled. Van Dyke really really struggled, and I think Botman's in that place at the minute. Um, I just think he needs to get over the injury, get his form back, get his confidence back. Um, and I think, you know, that, that will certainly help. And then the second thing would be, I think as well, a big part of it's the midfield and the goalie. I think one, once he's got Nick Pope back in goal or a new number one in the summer, perhaps, uh, and he's got a midfield in front of him that's fully functioning and works, I think you'll start seeing a better Sven Botman. I feel like everything's a bit all over the place at the minute. Not that I'm saying that, you know, Sven Botman's playing brilliantly and it's everybody else's fault. I'm not because he, he, he's not been good enough recently. But I do think that they are mitigating factors. And I think, you know, if we if we had Nick Pope in goal now and if we had, you know, a fully functioning uh, midfield, I don't think Botman's performances would be as highlighted, to put it that way. Uh, and like I say, you know, he's returned from injury. He doesn't quite look right. He doesn't look the same. Um, but that can take time. That can take time. I mean, we were, we were only talking um, a few months back, saying, oh, is Van, is Van Dyke, you know, coming towards the end of his career? And Van Dyke now is playing arguably the best the best football, um, the best football as a centre back in the Premier League. Um, so he's he's really turned that corner and um, he's <clears> still, uh, reaping the rewards. So I think. I think it's those two things. Um, give Botman a bit of time, and you know, sorting the number one position in the midfield out. That Van Dyke fella is—is is he Earl's friend? Isn't he same guy? Earl's friend. Yeah, Earl's friend. Remember the video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you haven't seen it, Chris. No. Oh, well, you have to see that. Oh no, Earl's in the class video with, with the three of the Liverpool. Uh, sounds like. Um, Oh, Dyche. Evel, yeah, um, sorry, sorry, yeah, 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 in the video, yeah, sorry, I've seen it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that was classic, well, that, that was really good. Yeah, it was class. Uh, Redmond TV, TV, if you're looking for that video. Um, we move on. Yeah, I think uh, William Smith has put a really good comment here. Um, Botman has been an act to dry a number of times. He's not perfect, but we're, um, we're sort of begging for a pacey, um, athletic right centre back and a legit left back, and that's my thoughts. As well. um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my thoughts. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, but the amount of times that Botman is being made to look bad because he's having to cover, cover Dan Byrne, um, I don't think it's fair for someone that's fighting their way back in. You, you said Chris, he's working his way back in and trying to get back up to speed. For me, it's not about athletically what he needs to do, it's here, it's mentally. 
for me mentally he's worried about that injury that that situation with his with his ACL was handled like disgracefully bad the fact that he was made to play on on that potential injury and that ACL could have snapped at any point which would have put him out for about a year right that without a doubt is still on his mind because there was as reports have said there was arguments within the club some saying he needs to have surgery on it which will put him out of eight nine months and some saying no it'll be all right if he rests it if he's hearing all of this that's playing on his mind then so even when he is back up to speed and he was nearly there i think november into december and then they put it back again because they weren't sure if he was ready and being through all of that process, that plays with your mind. If you've ever played football or elite sport or, or, or even a, a decent level sport and you've picked up a bad injury and you're not sure whether you're ready to come back or not, whether it's a hamstring or an ankle or whatever it is, there's a there's a mental aspect there. You're worried about it going again. You're worried about it like going completely. And I, I, I think there's an element of that with, with, with Sven Botman. And him then coming back into the team and everyone's just thinking he's back. He's going to do what he's done before. Yeah, yeah, he needs yeah, time yeah. to get himself back into it. And he's had a number yeah. of games now. But when you're having to cover burn in those situations or when you've got a goalkeeper that stays on his line, so you're having to make a, a three, four, five to ten yard sprint further than you would normally need to do because normally Pope would come and clear it for you, that, yeah. that changes your way in which you play. Like That makes a difference. When you're having to do those further sprints more, more, more often than you normally would, and you're putting yourself under that strain, it's a mental thing that takes time. And we probably won't see the best of Sven Botman until next season. Having a rest, then coming back to preseason and going again is where you'll probably see the best. But long term, we need um, um, a, a right centre back because as much as we love Shaw, Shaw's 33 this year, and we have to at some point start to look beyond him. Because he's not going to play forever. Just like Kieran Trippier, he's not. So we need to look at who's going to partner Sven Botman moving forward. And uh, uh, the points you made, Daz, with regards to Shaw being great on the ball, nobody can do what Sven, um, that Fabian Shaw can do on the ball. No, no other centre-back in the Premier League, no other centre-back, um, as far as I've seen, is as good effectively on the ball with his passing range. No one is like him. Mm -hmm. um, however... What we then need to do to combat that, because I don't think we're going to get a centre-back in that's as good as that on the ball, but what you're going to get back in that is electric pace, fingers crossed, to recover and to win the ball in those areas. However, what we should be doing anyway is having midfielders that can do that. So it's about replacing sure. um, a Sean Longstaff that's got a range of passing. So we're not then dependent on Fabian Shaw. It's about replacing a Miguel Almiron with somebody that's got a range of passing. So it's not all on Fabian Scher. So it's not that we're putting pressure on playing it across the back all the time, doing all this business where we're putting pressure on ourselves that we can do our best football moving forward. So I, I think there's, there's things that, that, that need to happen there. But yeah, I agree um, with what you said, William. Um, I, I don't think it's Sven Botman's fault uh, at all. Uh, um, I, I do. I, I think there's there's other factors that, that are playing into that for sure. Um, couple more questions. Uh, let's have a look here. So Tom Dixon says, the next five Premier League fixtures, West Ham, Everton, Fulham, Spurs and Man United. Um, he's not said it, but how many points are we getting from that? Or, or where do you see, more particular, where do you see the wins coming from? Right, well, first off, we go one by one. We're at the West Ham game, the three of us. It's going to be very depressing if we don't win that one. So that we, we, we have to say a win there. Got to, got, to, got to win that game. Got to win that game. Got to. Yeah. Home. Got to. Have mm. to. Then, then we've got the, the, the Chris Hall derby. Chris needs to win we've that game. Win that. We've got to win that as we well. We need that got game. To. Chris will we be doing the reaction, leading the reaction show that night. Mate, we owe we owe them one big time, big time. I'm still getting reminded of that three nil Ole twenty nine as they keep talking about the better goal when we'd basically given up. Um, oh, that was probably there. They, they'll be making a DVD of that. I'm telling you. But yeah, <laughs> we 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 badly we badly owe them one. Um, the first two does. You're absolutely right. It, it, anything less than six points 
and I, I just can't accept that. Just can't accept that. It's got to be six points for me. Then Fulham, who we've we've beaten away from home and in the cup as well, haven't we? Mm. Um, yeah, that'd be a tough let's, game. Let's talk... I think I'd say draw yeah. on that. That'd be a tough game. Mm. Mm. We're capable of winning it. We're capable yeah, of winning still... it, but. I'm paying more capital with them all, but it's just the circumstances we'll find ourselves on the day. Yeah. It's, yeah. And th- this this uh, season. I think we win that one, Fulham. Pete. Freeman's on the bounce, eh? <laughs> yeah. Bounce. Never learn. Never learn. No? <laughs> I'll take that all day long. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, I-, I think we can win it. Um. Safety first, probably a draw. Uh, so I'll probably say I'll probably say a draw on that one, just just for safety. But um, more than capable of winning that one. Spurs, this for me is, is the is the most difficult. Well, well I know away at Man United it's going to be hard as well. But Spurs, mm. <sighs> weirdly, Spurs, yeah, probably. I I think that's weirdly. I fancy us more at home to Spurs than I would away at Fulham. I, I think Fulham would be a difficult game. I really, really do. But uh, Spurs, you, you can definitely get at them. You definitely get at them. And I think at St. James's as well. I also wonder whether, you know, like the pressure will really get... The thing that worries me about Fulham is Fulham haven't really got anything to play for. Um, whereas with Spurs, I just wonder whether the pressure will get to them. And they know, they know that on our day we can match them. And I just, mm-hmm. I think they'll go into that game and think, oh, we've got to win. And that's why I think that we we might turn them over. I fancy I fancy us more at home to Spurs than I do away to Fulham. I can draw for that one. The pressure's all on Spurs. It is. The, um, uh, the pressure is all on them. Um, uh, we can definitely win that game. We, we can cause them problems. They play with a with such a high line like Villa do. That they're all in, wins in there, but they've got some superb players. And Doggy is just quality. I was saying to Toby the other day that that um, that saw in midfield, um, the board he put in for Madison's goal. Like, I remember that saw when we beat them six one last season. He had to get dragged out for that twenty minutes because he was shocking. He yeah. is a reborn player. He looks a proper proper player. Yeah, um, he looks really good. They're, they're a good team. Um, I, I'm, look, I'm, I'm going to play safe here. I'm, uh, I'm going to say draw. Um, I think we can win, but um, yeah, uh-uh. I'm going to say draw. Yeah, and the last one, it's Man United. I don't care where we're playing them. If we're playing them on the moon, we have to win. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, um, we, we we do. We do. Uh, another tough game. Uh, I think the two the two standouts for me again. I know they're both away, so it's quite obvious. But I think I think Man United's away and Fulham away. They'll be the difficult ones. But if we can again, they'll be in a similar position to Spurs. They'll be expected to win, um, especially being at Old Trafford. But um, again, I'd probably take a point. But we're more than capable of winning. That's what we keep saying for all these fixtures. We're more than capable of winning. Five wins, should we'll be in fifth spot in the league then. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's something you know yourself. Things are going to blow up along the way, as they have done all season long. Most probably like last season. Yeah. I just hope they don't blow up in the first two games. As long as they don't blow up in the first two games, I'll, I'll, I'll sleep <laughs> easy. Yeah. If we win that next five, if we win that next five, we're getting Europe 110. percent Yeah. Like, yeah. It, yeah. Even Question if for wouldn't... Chris. Go on. Sorry, Pete. Question for Chris. You have to choose one, a win from the West Ham game or an Everton game. What are you picking? Everton all day long, all day and all night. Um, but but I, I must say... I have so to we can blame that. you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I must I must caveat that in that obviously we're going to be at the West Ham game. So the West Ham game will mean a lot and it will put a big dampener on our weekends if... We don't get three points against West Ham. I really want my that that's why I was so adamant before saying like those two games are the must win. The must win. If you said to me now we can only win two of them games, I'm picking them two all day. All day. But Everton just more because we can't we can't we can't uh, get no points against Everton in the season. We just can't. I, I may as well move out if that's the case. I may as well just go and move somewhere else because it's I won't. It's selfish that one, Chris. But okay, okay. I don't, mate. I, I just, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm already. I'm still aiming about the three nil now. 
Um, I can't. I can't have another. Another, especially St James's. I can't. I just can't. <sighs> okay. Right. Are we got that. It for the questions. A uh, couple more, uh, or may- maybe one more. Um, uh, what sort of team would you play on Saturday? You team. So if you were to pick your 11 now, who would you have out there from who's likely to be available? Hmm. I don't I don't think we stand a chance in, in that this game. Um I think I think well I think Eddie Howe's got to name his strongest team, if I'm honest. I think he's got to because um, you know, our our season it's season defining really for Eddie Howe because you know if we if we get through against Man City all of a sudden it, it changes the landscape a bit. Um in terms of selection, I don't want to ruin it too much, Pete, because I know we'll probably talk about it in a way, Dave. But um I would definitely have Jacob Murphy in there, put put it that way. And um if if fit. And um yeah, I, I'd name the strongest eleven possible because we we we've got it, we've got to go for this. And let's be honest, lads, if it, you know, I, I I've been saying this, I've been watching Man City for the last few weeks intently because obviously we're wanting Man City to be pip Liverpool to the title. Um Man City don't look good at all. Mm. Um you know and will Man City kind of feel the way we're feeling in terms of oh this isn't important. Man City want the league, Man City want the Champions League. They won't be that bothered over the FA Cup. I'm not saying that Pep doesn't want to win it, but this will be the lowest of the priority. Um and I think I think if we if we play the youngsters, I'll be a bit disappointed because let's be honest, this this is our only chance of silverware now. Um and I, I really hope that we go for it because we're not that far away from Wembley boys. 90 minutes from Wembley, and then all of a sudden the mood changes. Only Man City in a way. And then we get wolves and then we get to the final. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd love it. I'd love it. What about you, Pete? Um I'm playing most of the players that played on Monday. Um, there's a few people who uh, uh, Rich Dobbins just put drop Botman. No, well, why? Why you let them off easy? Um, after that performance, they need to get back on it and go in. You need to put performance in it. You need to put a performance in right before the international break. Go out and do a job for the team. And I bet you any money sets up to defending this game. He'll set up defensively yeah. to counter-attack in this game. It won't be all out press. He'll sit back in, he'll sit deep, he'll try and hit on the counter. So I, I, I think yeah, I think Debravko will play. I think um, I, the, the one change that I think might happen is that um, he might play Kraft. Um, he, he might play Kraft and, uh, and Livramento, um, right and left back. That, that might be a change. He might give Burn a rest because Burn... Being in against Man City it could be a, a very, very difficult afternoon for him, more than normal. Uh, but I'd go, um, yeah, Kraft right back, Livermento left back, Botman and Shaw. Um, in the midfield, I'd be throwing Miley in there. I'd give Longstaff a rest, move him out. Yeah. Um, Bruno, because I don't think he can get suspension from this game, so I'd play him. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'd, get, I'd be playing Joe Willick as well. And then I'd be going, well, you got Richie Murphy. Anderson. Um, you got Anderson, yeah. I was about to say, uh, Anderson could potentially play um, and, and get a start there. Targets on the bench, but I don't think they'll start him because they're just back in training. And yeah, I'd, I'd go Alexander Isak because there is nobody else. Um, we have literally one striker now. Even our backup striker is now potentially out for the season. Uh, <laughs> so we have nobody else. Um, I just honestly, this just is absolutely mind boggling. We better learn from these mistakes. We need to start signing players right from the beginning um, in the summer. We, we, we cannot mess around. I'm really, honestly, boys, I'm really interested to see who we sign this summer. That tells me the intent that we've got going into next season. It really does. Because this, this squad of players, we'll, so we'll look at some of the names that we're talking about here. In all due respect, Dan Byrne starting football matches for Newcastle United. He's going to be in the squad next season. Fine. But he shouldn't be starting for Newcastle. 
Jacob Murphy, in all due respect, Miguel Almiron, Sean Longstaff, Martin Dubravka. Pete, come on. Come on. Stop. I'm going to stop you there, Pete. <laughs> this is the right time more. to do this. There's more. And just, there's more. And there's, <laughs> and there's more on notice. Watch this. <laughs> Squad game is well, back. Pro- probably next week. And Pete can continue on listing out about 20 more players there. You just see Pete with a knife like that. We need to go in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, I think it's very fitting that it was put on there. Who survives, you decide. Because, yeah, um, there won't be many. <laughs> there won't be many. Well, as, as well as the three of us deciding, you were deciding as well. So it's like last time, we were going to have keyword uh, hashtags and you put the player's name and which which box they, they fit in. But uh, yeah. we might throw in that next week, uh, bringing it forward because we kind of have to know at this stage. That That's coming uh, on Loaded as well. Um, also, just a quick shout out as well as we're wrapping up the show is what's happening tomorrow uh, is we're back for Talking Tune. And who we got, Pete? Yeah, we've got some familiar faces coming and joining us again. Uh, Jordy Josh, uh, Jonathan from uh, Jonathan Greenwood from um, uh, Newcastle Fans TV. Sure, we'll be talking about that big charity game at the end of the month again. Um, and we've got the Jordy Dread. We've got Specs back in the house. Uh, all looking forward to coming and joining us. Um, and I'm sure they've got a lot to say on on that performance on Monday and their own opinions on some of the things we've talked about tonight. So we'll be definitely putting them um, uh, through their paces. But uh, yeah, just on, on Jonathan Greenwood, yeah, um, he he did kind of tweet out again today about the charity match. We are one third uh, of the way there with regards to the money raised for the Alan Shearer Foundation. Um, so yeah, if you haven't already and you want to kind of just give whatever you can, um, to, towards the Alan Shearer Foundation. Um, the link's just there, just pop up on the screen. Um, if you have a look at that Just Giving page, whatever you can, whatever whatever's possible, um, would be amazing. And, and it, it's going to a really good place. And, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, um, obviously, kicking the ball around. But, obviously, the money that's raised to go into a good place is, is the most important thing, that's for sure. Nice one. Nice one. Uh, just a quick shout-out to our sponsors. Cheers, sponsors. Uh, we, we'll uh, leave it there. Uh, you know who you are. Uh, we're going to be going into more detail on that during the week. Um, so, uh, there's only one thing left to say, lads. Who wants to say it? No, we're not saying it. We're playing this again. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs>